Jubilee announces the next legendary character coming to Marvel Strike Force to many people, including my surprise. And yeah, I have my thoughts on why she was picked. I'm going to talk about that in this video, plus answering the rest of your questions from the mailbag channel on the Discord. So if you're ready for all of that, guys, you know what to do. Find that like button. Let's go smash it. Valley Flyer. Hello, hello, hello. What is up, Valley Maniacs? I am Valley Fly, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you were having a great day. I hope you're ready for all of these questions from the Discord, including Jubilee, the next legendary character come to Marvel Strike Force. Now, if this is your first time watching this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, the notification bell, so you get notified every time a new video comes out because we put out a lot of Marvel Strike Force content on this channel and you want to be ready for all of it. Now, before we get into all of your questions from the mailbag, let's take a little bit of time and give a big shout out to the sponsor of this video. Sweet champions, tough bosses, millions of players, Raid Shadow Legends got it all. And the link to download Raid is down in the description, but I'm here busy getting ready for the holidays with some of my buddies here, Rain Beast, Frostbringer, and one of the best legendary champions in all of Raid, Sir Nicholas. Yeah, you better hurry with that tree so you can make your list and check it twice. And if we take a look at Sir Nicholas, what makes him so good? It is this skill right here, Goodwill. Level one, he's gonna place an unkillable buff and a 15% continuous heal buff on all of his allies for two turns. This is really, really good for taking on the clan boss. And this month, Raid got its biggest update ever. And the main event is this thing right here, the Doom Tower, 120 floors, secret challenges, and 12 crazy bosses to battle. And in addition, 14 brand new champions are arriving during this update, just in time for the holidays, along with some special holiday events and tournaments. And if you want a head start for all of this action, all you need to do is click on the link in the description and if you are a brand new player you will get an experience booster free energy an ancient shard the void champion bulwark and 50 free gems and bulwark is another great champion for taking on the clan boss ladies and gentlemen it is that easy if you're a brand new player and click on that link in the description all of your treasure it is going to be waiting for you right here so what are you waiting for? Yeah, so big shout out to the folks over at Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. And if that game does look cool, make sure you use that link to download so you get some free stuff if you are a new player. But without further ado, guys, let's get to your questions. Boom, first question of the week. Hey, Valley, stay classy. Keep up all the great content. Thank you, brother. Uh, last level cap increase. Most of the content creators talked about at least 11 layers tuned to level 71 because of a noticeable stat increase. I know it's too early for the majority of the players, but does any of the new levels, 76 to 80, have more bang for the buck? Now, uh, th there was a big jump from level 70, uh, 70 to 71 and 73 to 74 uh, in that in your focus and your resistance, but I'm not seeing a huge, huge jump in any one particular level between level 76 and level 80. And if you want to see exactly uh, what the stats are, we could go over to msf.gg and use their calculator there. So boom, here we are on msf.gg. And just for example, let's take anti-venom here. We go in here and we can see all of their stats. If we scroll to this section right here, character stats and gear, well, you can see what their exact stats are. And uh, there is a there is a disclaimer here. These aren't 100% accurate because they don't know the developer's equations, but they're pretty accurate and they will give you kind of a general idea of wh what you could expect from your character as far as their base stats. So if we go up here, level 76, level 77, we see a big increase in health and damage, but I'm not seeing a uh, one level that increases this a little more than others. So if you want to, I, and I'm just glancing at it, guys. So if you want to take a little more deep dive into what you can expect as you're leveling up your characters, see which would be worth it, which not, make sure you check out msf.gg. And again, big shout out to TyJ Pimtoxy for putting all this stuff together. All right, Valley Flying, what's going on, brother? Much love from Atlanta. Last time I posted, you showed my question and answered it. My wife was giddy because she knew I was a fan. Well, here we go again, brother. All right, uh, my question is with Arena Cheating. Is there a way to take screenshots and send it to the devs? Uh, also, yeah, so actually to take screenshots on your phone, I know on my iPhone, you press 
the volume down button and the power off button. You hit that at the exact same time, take a screenshot. You could send that to the devs as far as our customer service. I'm not sure how it works on other phones, but uh, yes, take a screenshot, send it as often as possible. Uh, as uh, Also, what success do they have at stopping cheaters once found? I don't care about putting an alliance that was dumb enough to make their cheating obvious as they sit in the top three to help each other in my arena star. TMC deviants in case the devs are watching. Oh, I thought you didn't want to put them on blast. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I want uh, cheating in all versions of the game to stop. I think uh, most of the players in the community are in agreement with you. They want all this cheating banned. Now, uh, a while ago, I was supposed to do an interview with Cerebo. That looks like it got pushed back to January, but I asked a lot of you guys for questions and I submitted some questions there. One of it was specifically about arena cheating, and I think think just from the conversation that I've been hearing, I think they're looking into this and solving this. So hopefully uh, this, this gets solved sooner than later. And for those of you that are not in the know that we're not talking about slingshotting, things like that, there's an actual cheat that uh, people are using that hopefully gets solved very, very soon. But uh, yeah, send, send in as much information as you can to the devs and hopefully that allows them to fix this sooner than later. All right, so happy Smash Miss from the PDX. I like that. Happy Smash Miss to you, brother. Smash Miss to you. Question about resource capacity. We get energy resources, refreshes from a lot of spaces, purchases, daily objective challenges, inbox gifts. Sometimes when I claim these, they go over capacity. Sometimes I can't. Are there actual rules about when you can exceed capacity and when you can't? So I remember them saying something about this in the past and i've noticed that when you purchase certain uh resources like these uh refreshes and things like that that it will get you over capacity so if you're buying energy you're buying 2000 well it's not going to stop at that uh, 120 or whatever the level cap is or the energy cap is it's going to give you all 2000 i've noticed that i'm buying some of these energy offers with this uh, double energy or this double experience that we're getting and when I'm buying that, I'm getting uh, blitz charges that's going over my blitz charges. So, or that's going over my blitz capacity. So with that said, I think when you're buying things in the store with actual money and with cores and you're doing it from purchases, it goes over that. And when you're getting it from inbox messages and just gifts, resources, things like that, it does not. And I, I, th I think that is uh, how it is. And I do remember them saying something like that way back in the day. But uh, I, I think that is the answer, brother. If you're getting it from a purchase, whether real money or from cores in that offer section, it does go over the purchase and everything else. As far as I know, it does not. And if I'm not right, let me know in the comments, guys. But I think that's how it works. All right, Valley Flight, hope you're doing well this holiday season. Same to all of you guys as well. Question for you about starting a streaming content creator presence. Did you design your logo or did you hire someone to do it for you? And if so, who? So I did my original logo and... Uh, there's a guy Strider. He's actually working on some stuff for me now and uh, check him out. He's done a lot of designs for the community. He actually, when he was first starting off, just designed a logo, sent it to me and said, here, use this on your So I've been using that as kind of a way to help him promote some of his stuff there. So reach out to him. He does some really good work. He's helped a lot of people in the MSF community. But uh, I think the best thing you could do as someone that's starting out as a content creator, just make content. All the other stuff, You'll get along the way, but just just make content and whether people are watching or not, you'll learn a lot from that as far as just the, the the creation process, the editing, shooting, all that stuff. You'll learn that. So just make content. And uh, but Strider is who I use. And like I said, he does some good work. I'll try to get his link, put it in the description. Uh, top of the morning to you, Valley. Just unlock Ultron. Got him to seven stars. Nice. What team should I place him in? So. Uh, I don't know if he's really too much in the arena meta nowadays, but if you're just unlocking him, I'm assuming a lot of people in your arena shard are also just unlocking him. So there's a lot of different mixed teams that you could use him with. I know for war offense, there's a lot of mixed teams like uh, the Defender Tron, Power Armor Tron, Aim Tron that you could use to punch up against the other teams. Uh, as far as what I'm using him in right now is just a team with Drax, uh, Yondu, uh, Night Nurse, Mantis, just to help keep him alive so that his bots can uh, do their thing and win blitz matches for me. Uh, the team that I use with him in Ultima 7 as my primary backup team when I'm not using the symbiotes, because there's some no's as the symbiotes don't do well. I have a team with Thanos, Ebony Ma, Black Bolt, Minerva, and Ultron as the fit. So that's how I'm currently using Ultron. If you guys are using Ultron in different ways, though, let me know because I think I think the opponents that you're facing are a little different in arena. I don't remember what I used for arena back in the day. I think nowadays it's a lot of Black Order versus Black Order with maybe some hybrids with Symbiote, some other teams in there. But 
A lot of black orders. I don't see them in arena, but I know I used to use them a lot. So uh, hopefully that helps you with arena. I mean, excuse me, with the raids and war. But yeah, that's, he needs, he doesn't have a solid place in my opinion right now. Next question, Valley Flying. This is a complaint and a question. Uh-oh. I have a major issue with farmable characters in nodes. I mean, they're technically not guaranteed. It's a possible reward. Yes. Uh, I think it's kind of cheap on Scopely's part. If they're going to be farmable, make them farmable. Have been, there have been times when I've used 200, 300 energy, energy on Proximus nodes for a few days in a row, pulled zero shots. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, that's not really fair, in my opinion, to see this happening with Red Skull. Can you convey to the devs to adjust these nodes to, uh, so that it's guaranteed two charge with the possibility of more? I think it would be more reasonable since they were advertised as farmable. Well, I mean, that, that's kind of what farmable is, is to have them on a node. And some days you get lucky. I've gotten... I've gotten eight, 10 shards sometimes on these nodes. It's, it's very rare, but it, it happens. I've also then been days like yourself when I've just pulled zero, zero, zero. And it does get frustrating. I, I'm not sure if that's a huge problem though. I think the devs do that on purpose. So even with myself complaining to them, I don't think they're gonna switch that. But uh, I just, you know, hopefully you get more of those days with awesome luck and not, those, not many of those days with bad luck, but yeah, I, I think it's just kind of the nature of this game. There, there's a little bit of RNG involved, and uh, the, the place that is involved uh, that that sucks sometimes is those farmable nodes, brother. All right, hey man, thanks for being helpful with your videos and answering some of my questions here. Much appreciated. Well, I hope it helps you guys, and it keeps keeps you guys entertained as well. My alliance is moving to Ultima 7.2, which is good for the bulk of my team, but I'm a lit lo a bit lower than most players. I've unlocked Black Bolt. Want to use him in raids? Been using Venom, Carnage, Symbiote, Spider-Man, and Black Bolt. My fifth could either be Minerva, Hela, or Shuri. Who do you suggest? And if I go with Hela, should I use Healer ISO for extra healing for my underpowered team? So let me address the Healing ISO 8. So if your characters are underpowered, I do think that Healer ISOs will be good for the team, even if they're not the most... Uh, the accurate in most game modes for raids especially if you're underpowered that extra healing is going to do difference now which 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 one do i think you should build up i think they're all good i don't think you should stop with one i think what you're missing is some some healing for the team so i would advise either minerva or shuri first hella would be last but what i use is that uh with that uh, with a similar team i, I do have anti-venom on that team but instead of venom i have Anti-Venom, Carnage, Symbiote, Spider-Man, Black Bolt, and Yo-Yo. So Yo-Yo is another good fifth. But again, if you're under power for these, I think that Healer ISO 8, maybe on the full team, it may reduce their damage a lot. But if you're having trouble surviving, then that may be the direction you want to go until you get these characters built up a little more. Uh, that, that's my recommendations. Let me know if you have any difference of opinion in the comments down below, guys. Uh, hey, Valley, hope you're staying safe, brother. You too, as well. Uh, you're my favorite YouTuber. Oh, you're my favorite. I'm my favorite YouTuber. <laughs> Been building up my XT, X-Men team for Heroes Nexus campaigns. And then I saw the news of Beast moving to the new X-Men team. What does that mean for Storm as a rework for Double Chargers was based entirely around Beast? She's now basically being nerfed because of this is a waste of investment. Keep smashing, brother. So he, it looked, it's looked looking like he still has a role on that uncanny x-men team and just on a basic x-men team but it looks like they're trying to make this new astonishing x-men team like the meta raid team and and, and so far what we know about their kits they look pretty strong so i think beast is going to have dual use on a bunch of different teams and you know hopefully hopefully he still gives that storm viability i never i never fully like storm's kit uh, just having her to get those charges in raids it takes too long you're getting it cleared with a special you're getting it cleared with the with the ultimate with beast it doesn't always clear into special so i i, I never really had a big use for her um yeah except for maybe building up charges nuking the last node but i i never really built up my storm enough for that to happen so she's probably going to remain where she is beast i'm probably going to build them up for this astonishing x-men team and uh, maybe switch between a couple of these uh teams maybe make hybrid teams for these nodes that's what i'm planning to do but yeah it really uh moving him to a different team it really kind of hurts hurts storm because of the way she she builds up charges and uses her charges on both her special and her ultimate uh, hey Valley, some speculation here with Iceman's passive standing four or more uncanny uh, X-Men. Does this mean another Doc Ock situation having more than five tunes on the field? Always give it the good work, staying class. And we have an answer here that I agree with. So I did want to put this up here. Uh, it's more than likely to get around the issue of when Iceman drops in PVE nodes. There are five 
astonishing Ekman is still prox and I think that is just the way for them to code that thing in the back because if this is exactly four then if there's more than four it could have problems so I think they just uh, put that more than four uh in there just to protect himself and PVE content like like you're saying there brother so I, I think I think it is for some of these longer raid nodes with multiple enemies maybe even a dark dimension node uh, that is coming whenever it happens. So yeah, he's, he's looking like a good character. I'm, I'm excited to see what the rest of this team is there. Uh, Valley, greenies from the UK. Hope you have a great uh, December so far. It's been pretty good so far. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope this is a weird year, guys. And hopefully you all guys are uh, doing well and handling this uh, great and have some good plans for the holidays. I'm going to try to unlock 45 shards characters on Blitz on the first try. However, I only end up getting 36 shards in total, including milestones when I go through Blitz. How many points on average will I need to be able to get to at least 45 shards to unlock these characters? Thank you. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All right. So it's going to be different for each character. For some characters, it's going to be high. Some of these more coveted characters, these more newer base characters. But uh, if you're not sure, uh, there is a link to my Discord down below. Go there. There's a section there that has Blitz predictions. And these are done by Wolverthor and his crew. Uh, but you could check that out, and uh, that's a good baseline for whatever whatever you want to look for the uh, for these new character blitzes. I'm I'm looking at the the list for uh, Yellow Jacket right now, and it looks like the top three percent to two to three percent was about ten million. The top four to ten percent was about four and a half to five million as far as the predictions. So that, I guess that's what we could expect for a little while for these new characters. But yeah, if you want to check out what it is on an individual character basis, then uh, check out the, the channel on the Discord server, brother. Our next question, Hello Valley from Israel. Hope you're feeling good. Love your channel. Thank you, brother. I hope you're doing well as well. Question is like that. My Venom, Carnage, Symbiote, Spider-Man are all gear 14. Anti-Venom, Scream, gear 13. Should I spend my uniques on uh on them got 24 at the moment or should i use them on symbiote spider-man and carnage for gear 15 so i guess this question is going to be based on where you are in dark dimension 3 how much of our priority you have on that how soon you want to get through that i mean you have venom carnage symbiote spider-man you should be able to get through those city nodes in dark dimension 3 with just them uh and then i guess my second question is going to be with your raids so i know anti-venom scream very very valuable on that full symbiote team in the raids so if you're ha if you're struggling with the raids, then you might want to upgrade them just for that. As far as gear 15, I think for me, that's going to take a long time. And hopefully with that, I'll have enough alien spores for that. But it's, it's really, it's really, are you able to pass all the content you have right now? As far as raids, uh, you're doing well in war, you're doing well in arena then save it save it wait till you get to gear 80 because there may be another character that's even better than symbiote spider-man and, and carnage that comes up before that just for dark dimension three so or dark dimension four so uh save it if you can if you're if you're struggling with some content though then upgrade them to get through that content but it, it's going to be a grind to get those alien spores they don't show up uh too often and uh hopefully they become farmable that, that would be the ideal situation especially with doom chapter three coming in this next update uh adonex says hello valley i've been very hesitant on committing my resources toward iso 8 but wondering what are your thoughts on doing symbiotes have not cleared dark dimension 3 yet i've read various things on skirmishers strike for the team but i've also heard rumblings about all of them being healers for massive regions what are your thoughts on what to do with them so i've basically been using the remnex uh list and using for that i think uh striker for anti-venom but if you if you're a little underpowered in the raids and struggling with these guys surviving and they're healing uh you could put all healers on them for that now you will be missing some ions because it takes a little bit to get them from uh when you're going from tier three and above on those iso classes it takes it takes a bunch of ions for that so it may put you back as far as that but i think giving you some benefit in the raids especially if your characters are a little underpowered that healing class is gonna be a lot help uh, very helpful for you until you get your characters built up enough so they could just survive on their own so uh it works i don't know if that would be my permanent uh, solution for them I, it, I i was doing that until my characters got built up and now that they've built up to a decent level i have striker uh skirmishers and everything on there and uh yeah i'm using i'm using remnex's list he, he's done the research for everybody and i'm just kind of basing it off that also there is a list on uh msf.gg as well that you could take a look at see what the best uh, iso classes for all the symbiotes are so uh those are the two resources that i would refer to as far as them but uh, i think they're they're not recommending healers for them but again like with the previous question 
you're struggling with raids, then that will help you to get through it a little quicker. Uh, hey, Valley, I know there's a lot of people who hate war defense specific characters and teams, but I like the idea of making teams that have one, maybe two name characters. The rest of minions making the war defense team. For example, Mercs, Red Skull, Hydra, Colson Fury, Shield, Malekith, and the Dark Elves, Talos, and the Skrulls, Ravagers with Yondu. Nobu, Electra Hand. I, I think I think I like that idea of making them useful. Uh, I don't want more minions coming to the game, especially more Dark Elves or Scrolls. But I, I like that idea of uh, giving minions a place on War Defense because they're kind of unusable in a lot of other game modes because they're outshined by a lot of these other characters that weren't around when we had this initial slew of minions that uh, were in the game when the game launched. But I feel they could a lot, make a lot of cool teams. People don't have to feel bad about using them. Favorite name characters on defense and use minions instead. So yeah, like, so like I said, I, I agree with this, but I, I don't want more minions in the game. But to, to make use of our current minions, I do like this idea. So with Nobu and the Hand, Ravagers and Yondu, maybe Yondu and Taser face with the rest of these minions. I think it could be pretty good. Noble Electra with the rest of the hand. I just I just don't want more minions in the game, though. So uh, that's my opinion. If you guys have got different opinions, let me know in the comments. Uh, Valley, with the announcement that Jubilee will be a legendary character. <laughs> you guys be excited that uh, anyone thought it could be a legendary release. I know it's possible the guy that cleans the bathrooms on the Heli character could, could be the next ledger, or maybe the secretary who schedules the classes at Xavier School for the Gifted Children. Now the question, can you sense my sarcasm? Uh, just a little bit. Just I, I sense a little bit of sarcasm there. Happy holidays, Scopely. So, uh, all right. So finally, it is the time that I'm going to talk about why I think that Jubilee is the legendary character. And I think someone that I, I can't remember if it's a comment on one of the YouTube videos or I saw this on Reddit. Someone was saying that it's probably to appeal to the Asian market because she is Asian. I know that Scopely is trying to expand into different markets. There's not a huge market in China, in Japan. Uh, I'm not sure if this game is really big in Korea. And I know there, I know Tadano Mac is huge and he's from Japan, but I don't think there's a huge player base there. So I think this was their attempt to reach out to other markets. Whether that is accurate or not, that that does make sense in my mind. So that's that's what I think they're doing here. Even though she doesn't really qualify uh, as far as power level, from what I know in the com the comics, the cartoons, I think she's not as strong as a legendary should be but uh hey neither neither in my opinion was the legendary shuri which is why we always do the legendary shuri just because of that so uh yeah i think i think it's a marketing thing that they chose that so you know well we'll see if their plan works or not we'll see if that's the actual plan why they did that but um yeah that, that that's my thoughts on the legendary jubilee guys uh, next question, Valley. Here's my thought on who the Lex and the legendary might be. I think it's Shogo Lee. Shogo Lee is Jubilee's adopted son who will be great synergy with Jubilee due to their bond and the fact that he's not a mutant. He's actually a magic shapeshifter who turns into a dragon due to Lockheed might, uh, who do to Lockheed might have synergy with Shadow Cat. I think this fits with a rumored mystic legendary that's giving us so. So two mutant legendary characters, two both related to Jubilee. Uh, I, I, that, I, so Jubilee was released as a legendary and I think it was to appeal to a more diverse audience, but the, the two of these characters, I, I, I'm going to push back on this one a little bit, but it, Hey, Hey, anything is possible. Right? So even though I don't think this is right, uh, it, it could happen. So we we'll, I guess we will see, we'll see what happens with it. What is going on Valley? Hope you and your family are doing well during this time. I'm curious in your opinion, what would it take for the devs to listen to the community and give what it asks for? I say 95% of the MSF community are outraged at the decision to make Jubilee a legendary character over many fan favorite uh, X-Men. I know there's a monetary decision behind this and they won't try to give us an explanation as to why they did this. I feel they've completely lost us with their players and uh, the characters they want to see the game. So yeah. I'd, I personally, I would have preferred to see Nightcrawler, Professor X, even even Iceman as the next legendary character. But we got Jubilee, and I, I think it's I think it's their attempt to reach out to different markets that they're not currently in. So that, that's why it's done. I, is it the right decision to do that? I am not sure. Only time is going to tell on that one. We'll see uh, if we get a big influx of players from Asia because of this or uh, subsequent to this. But I think that's why. Whether it's the right decision or not, I don't know. I, th I think time's going to tell with this one. Uh, Jubilee. As a let more Jubilee questions, guys. People people are heated. Yeah, especially people in the U.S. are heated about Jubilee, guys. 
as a legendary, not a legendary wanted, but a legendary that absolutely epitomizes 2020. I, I think we could agree on that one. I think most of the community can agree on that one. But but she's gonna be released in 2021. So, but I guess I guess a lot of the events, the the quarantining events, are still gonna be going on. So I guess I guess it still fits. Somewhere Loki is smiling. So Pemtech to unlock Jubilee. Well played, Scopely. Fix your legendary, Scopely. So again, again, I agree. Even though they may have a plan, they, there may be a method behind their madness. It, it's still a very interesting decision. So uh, we'll we'll see if their if their uh, plan pays off for them. Valley flying. What's going on, brother? I wonder if you heard anything about an orb opening event coming by the end of this year. So. Uh, we got we got a tease of a holiday event in the last blog post, but nothing specifically about an orb opening event. But if if the past couple holidays, the past two holidays, this game has been around, is any indication? I think we will. But as I always say to people, if you need any of the orbs that you're saving, open them right now. This event may come around, it may not come around, and you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot in case it doesn't come around. But if you don't need any orbs right away, save them because. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot in case this event does come around. So for, for newer players, I think I think you're going to be in a better situation by opening whatever orbs you have. I think those resources are way too valuable as a newer player. But if you've been playing for a while and don't need all the contents and whatever the orbs are, I think you could hold off saving it and seeing if there is an event. My opinion is that there's going to be one, but have not seen anything as far as data mines or anything official yet. Although, like I said, the blog post did kind of hint that there is an event going on. Just not specifically an orb opening event coming on this holidays. All right. Do you think the clue, no hints this time, will be enjoying listening to inevitable speculations has to do with the comics, the all new X-Men, the inevitable series that came out a few years ago? If so, could be the fifth character be Angel or Phantamix that with an astonishing X-Men character. So someone has sent me the info on the uh, inevitable series of the X-Men. And the only character that is not in the game and that has not been announced that would make sense is Angel. So I think I think if they are hinting at it by using that inevitable word, Angel is going to be the fifth of this team. If that was just if they were being truthful and they were no hints in that and that's just uh, saying that, oh, we know people are going to be guessing, then uh, it, it could be anyone. Maybe Nightcrawler, maybe Professor X. I don't know who else could round out this team as a fifth. But uh, again, with Jubilee as the legendary... I think uh, who who knows who knows anymore, guys. Uh, yo 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 Valley. So with Scopely releasing all of these new characters and teams, do you think they will consider doing an expansion of the save teams? Oh my goodness, I hope so. I hope so. I'm already running out of save teams, and it's only been what a few months since the last update of giving us more teams. Uh, I, I don't know what what the the issue is. I guess I guess. Because we're playing, it, it, we have the ability to play this on multiple devices. I know some people switch between uh, iOS account and a uh, Android account, especially with the influx of BlueStacks players. Uh, that uh, that they need us on their server so that we get our save squads, no matter what device we're on. I would prefer something a little local, but that would that would screw up us playing different devices. So it looks like all that data is stored on their side. And what I've heard previously, what they said previously, is there's an issue. Uh, of all this data that has to be stored. It's a lot of data. So I think that's what the holdup is. So if they figure out a way to really crunch this data, I, you know, and, and in my mind, I think it's just a series of zeros and ones that they're storing on there. So I don't know how much data it is, but I guess with a lot of players, it does add up. So I think that's what the holdup is. And I hope there is a solution for this because I know there's other games out there, similar games, <clears throat> Swaga that has unlimited save squads and uh, has, probably has a similar amount of players base, probably even a bigger player base that has managed to solve that problem. So hopefully, I, I'm crossing my fingers that we're gonna get more save squads. I mean, yeah, you mentioned you mentioned a bunch of teams and a bunch of teams that could be coming. We need more. We've needed more. We've needed an unlimited amount of save squads for a while because I could only I can't I don't even have enough for a full blitz rotation at this point. So. Yeah, and that's that's not into taking account of teams that I use in raids, the teams that I switch off with in arena, and uh, some of my war teams as well. I, I I need more, so hopefully it's coming in 2021. Valley, another question. I am free to play. I'm set up to unlock or have already unlocked all of the legendary characters. Congratulations. Uh, good luck with the Jubilee, whatever her unlock budget is. I don't have great red stars on some of them. My question is, how do players get an influx of promotion credits? Obviously, Chaos Theory and the daily one you get, but this still isn't very many credits. Takes forever to upgrade my Black Bolt for four red stars to five red stars. That was the big fear 
uh, when this change, this Red Stars 2.0 rework came about. Now, when that initially happened, I, I think there were some bugs that they were giving out a lot of promotion credits. I think they had just some promo that they were giving them away. So it wasn't as bad as at the start, which, which quelled some of the complaining that people were doing about the store changes. That's not as easy to get promotion credits from those four and those five and those six elite orbs. The cost, the conversion rate went down. They are giving us more red star orbs, but not more promotion credits. And I think the only get, logical place to get them is from that chaos theory and your daily objectives. And of course, if you're someone that spends money, some of these promotions that they have, especially around the holidays. So uh, yeah, we, we need more. We need, a, we need a more reliable way to get these because it really sucks that uh, teams that should be good, that you want to build, you're not able to build because you don't have good red stars in them. I, and and I, I'm speaking more for myself. And I think a lot of other players there that uh, teams that uh, you want to build, just not able to because it, some of it is going to come down to luck on your red stars. So I would like to see this expanded in 2021. Maybe make the Wakanda, the Chaos Theory come back more. Uh, maybe make more events so that there's a uh, promotion credits. Maybe make a promotion credit blitz silver or gold. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we see something like this, but we, I think we need some more promotion credits in the game. Uh, Valley flying greetings from Costa Rica. I've seen new war defense teams combinations lately, like black bolt with shield. Some people are splitting as guardians. If Thor's moved to wave one Avengers, what could be the best combination for the rest of the as guardians energy synergy with any other characters? Great video. Thanks for taking the time to share MSF info. So. Uh, I was actually thinking of taking Thor off as well because he is a beast on the Wave 1 Avengers, but I was looking at my Thor. I don't think he's scary enough to scare people off my Wave 1 Avengers. So right now he's still in my Asgardians. But if I were to move him, I saw someone use this uh, in this on a war last week. They had Drax in Thor spots, which makes it a little harder for the symbiotes to get the Greg, especially if uh, you get some bad RNG and Drax is on one side. The Greg spawns on the other side. You're not able to get to him right away so uh it takes a few turns but eventually with scream or with uh venom you can remove drax's taunt and eventually get to him so i'm not sure if that's a good long-term solution but it did make me question that matchup so uh drax is who comes to the top of my head let me know in the comments if there's any other characters that uh would be a good fit that you guys have seen in war that's giving you some trouble uh as as far as a fifth Asgard in replacement for Thor if you want to put him back on that Wave 1 Avengers team because I do think that Thor being on that team is the best version of that Wave 1 Avengers team. Next question. Hey, Valley, our alliance is going to be Ultimate 7.5 soon. Nice. Just wondering, what other teams should I use? I'm using my symbiotes all the way to the Ultimate node, but I'm not. I'm expecting this in Ultimate 7.5. Any help would be appreciated. So my backup team, like I said previously, especially on nodes with a lot of hero controllers, is Black Bolt, Minerva, Thanos, Ebony Maw, and Ultron. That team works very well on teams with good hero controllers or a lot of hero controllers that you can get that Maw passive going. But uh, the, the team that I use on that final boss node to help, and you could pretty much take out an Ultimus or a Captain Marvel, whoever with this team, is a Drax Shield Security. You ha and then you have your three guys that do mind control on the enemy. So Loki, Mystique, and Emma Frost. But you got to use Emma on a node previous because her, her ultimate is not available on turn one. So if you want to use that team, you could take out a Captain Marvel or an Ultimus or both or both. If you got the Emma cooldown set up properly. So those are the teams I'm using. If you guys are using some other teams with some great success in Ultimus 7, especially for those of you that just went from Ultimus 7.4 to 7.5, what teams are working for you guys? Let me know in the comments on this one. But that is what's working for me, brother. Uh, hey, Valley. Beat my first DD3 run today. Congratulations on that one. Started with five tunes at tier 14. Finished with 14. My, you finished, started with five and it was 14. Then you know what? I say that. I think that's very similar to how I ended though. The first node took, the first eight nodes took me maybe two to three months. Cosmic took a week. City one shot all of them this morning with four symbiotes. No AV his next. Oh, you, you probably do that in uh, one run with anti-venom. I think uh, we did that in two days, maybe one day. I don't know. But yeah, City's super easy once you get anti-venom in there. But uh, Cosmic is a lot easier than Global. How could I best my, my spend time in Global? I had Phoenix, Colossus, Emma, Shuri, Ultron by the end of the first run and avoided slip-ups like double Iron Fists. Uh, would a four Red Star Mr. Sinister or a three Red Star Ghost instead instead of Ultron make any sense just to stick with what I have? So if you're, if you're looking to conserve resources for Dark Dimension 4, I would just stick with what you have. It may not be the fastest run on Node 7, Node 8. You're going to slow down there a little bit, but... 
uh, you should eventually get to it. Ultron, I don't think, is the best for Dark Dimension 4 or Dark Dimension 3 because of his long cooldowns. If you don't have those cooldowns set, and with the rate that characters are getting one-shotted, you may not have your cooldowns set properly for that next node. So uh, you, you got a couple different options. If you look at node 8 on some of the best runs that people have had, some of the highest damage runs, Magneto, Mystique bo in, both, in both teams. So... Uh, you might want to look to them if you want to put some resources into more characters just for Dark Dimension 3. But uh, before you do that, just just you need to know where you're going to use these guys outside of Dark Dimension 3. But because I don't want to build characters specifically for that one game mode. Uh, I want to I want characters that I'm going to use outside of the game mode because once I'm done with Dark Dimension, I'm not going back. So those characters that I built up specifically for that game mode. A little disappointing now and a little underutilized for me right now. So keep that in mind if you're building up characters for that. But I think you should be good with what you have. I mean, Sinister is great. Ghost is great, specifically in Dark Dimension. In all of Dark Dimensions. I was going to say just Dark Dimension 3, but all of the Dark Dimensions, she's good. I just I just don't really have a lot of use for her outside of that. So I don't, I don't know if I'm going to build up just for a Dark Dimension. Unless later on, I know I'm going to need a strong Ghost for other game modes. So... Hopefully that helps, I, but my recommendation is just going with what you have. Take take a few extra days on it. Hey, Valley from the OKC. I hope you and your family are staying safe and well during these crazy times. So have you or anyone else noticed a large increase in these Wave 1 Avenger teams in Blitz? I feel like every time I do battle, they're one of the three teams as options to fight. Almost to run into them uh, when I'm grinding Blitz points for new releases. Uh, it sounds like the Wave 1 Avengers are becoming the new defenders in uh, Blitz. But uh, actually, I don't know if you remember back in the day in Blitz, you would pick three options all three options used to be defenders and it, it was very bad and it sounds like wave one avengers is getting to that point but uh so I, i'm not sure if you know how blitz is uh the, the teams are determined they're based on teams that people actually take into blitz mode and those teams are scaled up or down in power based on the team that you're putting in and the tier that you're at so they're based on real people teams and it may be because people are using more and more wave one avengers it's a very early game team so i'm thinking maybe there's uh there's a lot of newer players that are using this wave one avengers team which is which is uh which is causing all this influx of wave one avengers teams in blitz that's 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 what i'm thinking that sounds like a logical uh explanation but maybe that has nothing to do with it at all but uh that's what i'm thinking i know i know marvel future fight had some issues and there's people leaving the game and coming to marvel strike force so maybe that has to do with it they're they're leaving that game and starting their wave one avengers teams the very early team that you could build up so that that may have to do with something but uh yeah i i don't know i don't know but uh it's it's not good they're not an easy team to face it's it's not an auto win team that uh for a lot of the teams especially on some of the higher tiers so yeah, it's tough, but uh, hopefully you find a way around it. Hopefully one of your other selections is a pretty easy team. All right, hey, Valley from Rochester, New York. Hope you and your family are well. My question is for possible upcoming orb event. How many and what type of orbs should we shoot for? Thanks, Valley. Happy holidays, bud. So kind of like I said with the last question, save all your orbs that you don't need the contents of them right now. Uh, if you don't need any of the characters in premium orbs, if you hold off on your red star orbs, save those. Usually... Uh, with that, there's gold orb openings, sometimes with mega orb openings, uh, sometimes with the raid orbs and some of these gear orbs. They've done different ones each time, so it's hard to say what what actual orbs. Or, I, I mean, it, we, we still have no confirmation that there's an actual orb opening event. I think that's just uh, what a lot of the community is suspecting because they do these every so often to kind of get rid of uh, some of the orbs in our economy. So... Uh, any orbs that you don't need the contents of right now, save. Any orbs that you do, open them and get the benefit right away. Uh, Valley Fine, good day from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, hope tr good. Uh, hope all is good and training is going well. And thank you, brother. The training is back. I'm not as I'm not as injured as I've been in the past few weeks. Day 150 in the game, level 72. That's that's pretty good actually. Uh, Dark Dimension 2 ready. All right, got Carnage. Symbiote Spider-Man, Minerva, Emma, T13, struggling with the last one. Got Anti-Venom, six red stars, but I'm not sure I want to spend my super precious alien spores on another symbiote. Uh, I could bring Star-Lord for a fifth invisible woman, for instance. Should I upgrade Anti-Venom? So here's the thing. Like I said uh, in the previous question about who to build up, Anti-Venom is going to give you a lot of work, not just in Dark Dimension 3, but in other game modes, especially in the raids. If, if you manage to build a full symbiote team, you're going to want a very strong anti-venom because once you eventually get to Ultima 7, you're going to be using that unless unless there's another meta comes out in the time right in between right now and whenever uh, 
you guys are doing Ultima 7.5. So I think if you're going to see some benefit in getting him up right now because you're using him a lot, then do it. If you're not going to see any benefit for a while, then uh, you could go with what you have. Star Lord's a good fifth. That's another character that uh, once you transition from early and mid game, you're not going to use him a lot in the end game. I don't, I don't really have a solid role for Star Lord, but he is a great energy battery. He'll definitely help you for Dark Dimension 2, especially feeding Minerva all that cosmic energy. But uh, it's, it's, I think, I think you should get through it with, with whatever character you're looking at. Star Lord, Anti Venom. Both, both of them are really with you. I'll leave that to go to the beach if I can get Drew on some waves. So yeah, if you do see him, brother, tell him what's up for me. Valley Fine, hope all is well. Why does one ever have different times when they're raid keys, but one has the same time for when their alliance donations reset? Would it be possible to have raid keys reset at the same time that donations do? Which server reset is for the new store offer release? This would make it easier for alliance struggling to launch raids due to lack of keys and weed out the ones not pulling their weight. This is this has confused me for a long time. Ever since the game launched in beta, I thought they would kind of standardize some of these reset times, but it appears to be uh, tied to whatever time zone you started the game in. So it's kind of weird. I wish we would get two resets per year, like a lot of other games do, to to account for daylight savings time that we could reset our server time. But I it, and I think it would make it a lot easier if you could have your arena payout, your uh, server reset, where you reset the. Uh, raid keys and donations and then your overall reset is where you get the daily milestones and things all reset so i think it'd be easier to have them all at once and give us the option to switch this I i've been pushing that for a little while but uh, maybe that's something that we could push for a little harder in 2021 and uh, maybe get some ability to switch our reset times i i would like that i've been i this it's been very weird for a while uh, brother, I hope you and your family are doing well. Same to you, brother. I hope I hope all you guys are doing well with your families as well. Been hearing rumors Blitz Sim will cost Blitz credits, cords, or be a part of the battle pass. Have you heard anything about that? Uh, everything I've heard so far is that it will not cost Blitz credits, not cost cores, and not be a part of battle pass. But things change. Uh, I guess we're going to find out tomorrow what, what exactly uh, we're going to get with Blitz Sim. What exactly is going to happen with Battle Pass? Uh, it is definitely coming sometime in this next update that is dropping tomorrow. But uh, as far as when during the update it's going to drop, they they usually play that pretty close to the best. Some things drop right on update days. Some days, some things drop through the course of the update. But I think we will see very, very soon. But uh, everything I know, I, I don't think Blitz Sim is tied to that, brother. Uh, hello, Valley Blind. Hope you are smashing COVID, donning your mask to fight the conspiracy theorists as well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so many players, I'm starting to feel the burnout playing every day, raiding, blitzing, other daily on Lions duties. My question is, what is the problem with burnt out players selling their account? Many of us have to put in time and work effort to would hate my progress to go to waste if I didn't eventually, if I did try to eventually leave the game. Just hate 8, 8 million collection power, have a great roster. What am I making some money off my, my progress? So, uh, so first off, it's against the terms of service and pretty much every game that I've played, I've, and I've quit. I've thought about this, the time, the money that I've spent, and I've never sold my account. And as far as your risk selling your account, I think there's very low risk for you. But anybody buying account, there is going to be a risk because you're violating the terms of service by transferring an account. And that account could be get banned right away and they would be within the rights to ban it. So uh, I, I try to avoid these things. It's against the terms of service. Uh, you know, there, there's things you could do on your own that uh we don't need to discuss but yeah it's it's it's, it's a big risk brother but I, I, if you're planning on quitting the game anyway i think there's very low risk for you but anybody purchasing a account uh yeah you, you are at risk with that so beware be careful uh greetings from germany brother thanks for all the great content you've been doing thank you for watching brother uh question in preparing my x-force for the next doc event trying to get them to six stars do you have any of the in uh, info on the minimum team power to get through to six star missions I do not. I did not do the six star mission. My doc doc is only five stars, so I'll be doing it myself. So I don't have first hand knowledge of this. I haven't seen a lot of infographics on this, but uh, my suggestion is because the X Force is one of the best war offense teams, you're not going to be wasting a lot of resources by putting resources into this team. So uh, unlike the cream minions, unlike some of these other legendary unlocks where you're not going to use them too much, I think you can put a lot in X Force and see some return for that, especially on war offense. And you got some great characters in there, especially X-23 as well. So uh, build them up. But if anybody knows, if anybody has unlocked a six-star Doc Ock, uh, let me know in the comments what is the minimal power that you use for your X-Force unlock. Because 
Yeah, I, I haven't done that yet. All right, hey, Valley Jubilee, Shatterstar, Longshot, Kitty Pride, Iceman, plus one new character. So, wait, uh, hold on, hold on. Where did it did, according to the blog post, or at least the way I read it, Jubilee's not coming in this next update, but she's coming sometime in early 2021. So, it's two new characters and Shatterstar, Longshot, Kitty Pride, Iceman. So, those four and two characters that we don't know about yet. Auto Blitz Battle Pass Orb opening event. That, that's not confirmed either, although I think most people are suspecting that and wanting that. So many exciting things coming to MSF. I would agree with you on that one, Brother Marshy. And for those of you that don't know and hang out in the Valley Club, Marshy is one of the uh, mods on the Twitch channel. Uh, but honestly, what the community really needs to know now is, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes. It definitely is. And if you guys don't agree with me, let me know in the comments that you don't agree with me. But in my opinion, Die Hard is definitely a Christmas movie. And every every news update, I'm going to be asking whoever's on the show if they what their opinion is as well. Valley Flying Pym Tech looks kind of like Wakanda 2.0. <laughs> Astonishing X-Men Legendary Drama. Three partial rooms. Red Room not confirmed, but highly suspected. And I think uh, the rumors have been swirling around that team for a while, but not confirmed. We, we still don't know exactly who the next two characters are, but we did see data mines of Red Guardian and Jelena uh, a few weeks back. What kind of release schedule can the six characters have that will keep players interested in uh, the characters that we can't immediately use on their intended team? So I'm not sure what the release schedule will be or what is the most beneficial that will keep the majority of the player base interested. But I know that this update is supposed to last for a while, so I think they're going to stagger them. Hopefully they're going to stagger them uh, at least two weeks apart sometimes we get characters like every week i'm hoping they'll stagger these every two weeks and give uh the folks at scopely time to enjoy the holidays and uh allow us to really enjoy and build up these characters so i'm hoping but i'm not sure what the correct answer to that is i think the marketing folks at scopely are the one that looks at the numbers and crunches them and determine what is the best uh method for them to make the most money and that's that's what we're gonna get uh the only complete method we know out of the eight characters six dispatch Two next, Jubilee and an Astonishing Fifth. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to complete this uh, Astonishing X-Men team. Not this patch, but the following patch. Satterstar is a campaign, and we don't know who unlocks Jubilee. That is that is true. We don't know the complete release or the complete unlock method for Jubilee yet. From what it's built as a massive patch with new game mode, we're missing a lot of information. We are. And I think uh, because it's such a big patch, and a lot of it has to do with uh, the changes in the Envoy program since the leaks. So... Um, if there weren't as much leaks, I think we'd have a lot more information, but because there's so much information getting leaked, I think that, uh, really limits the information that the envoys get firsthand. So yeah, if you guys want more information, then, uh, talk to the people that are doing the leaks guys. Uh, next question. Can you give us a legendary Jubilee? <laughs> Has Drew heard any confirmation on who the final characters will be in this next patch? Any rumors of Storm, Wolverine getting the astonishing tag like Beast? Not heard any rumors on that. And the last time I spoke to Drew, he was hinting that Red Room and Mutants and then the helicopter accident was the was the characters this patch. So helicopter accident, Shatterstar. We know about three mutants. They're confirmed in the blog post. And Red Room was what he was talking about. So the data mines for Red Guardian and Yelena would, uh, would lead to that conclusion so it, it maybe is that maybe something else i i don't know but uh that's that's what we know so far but uh we got a day we got another day and we will know for sure who these next characters are oh hopefully hopefully they're not uh, holding back information on the patch like it did with the blog post last week top of the morning to you and your family what if red gurum could be the next legendary unlock just a thought in my head Two farmable characters and two on the way. Well, we don't know who this complete team is yet. So uh, I think a lot of players are suspecting Black Widow and Hawkeye are going on that team. I've even heard rumors of Captain America going on that team, but it's just rumors and not from anything substantial. So uh, yeah, I mean, anybody could be the next legendary unlock. It could be, it could be X Factor. It could be Astonishing X-Men. It could be Red Room. All right, well, it can be Astonishing X-Men because we don't have Jubilee on that team. But yeah, it could be X Factor. It could be Red Room. I don't know. It could be it could be Pimtech. Who knows? I, I'm trying to build all these characters just so I get these legendary characters. Or I'm trying to get all these potential unlocks. So I get these legendary characters to make content for you guys. But as far as confirmation, I think that's something that Scopely plays very close to their vest even before all these leaks started happening, brother. All right. How excited for Auto Sim Blitz are you? Oh my goodness. This this is probably the most exciting thing in the patch for me. This auto sim blitz been waiting for that ever since we saw those initial screenshots over a year ago probably about a year and a half at this point of uh auto sim blitz so I, i'm looking forward to that I, I wish it took 
uh, less time to develop that, but it looks like it's coming very soon. We got confirmation of that. So uh, very, very happy. I think most people are, especially with those who have a B3 roster. How do you think they will keep Blitz free to play friendly? Uh, previously, the free to play advantage was sacrificing time over many to get new characters. But with the Sim, those who spend money get a huge advantage. Those are already have a strong roster and get, getting a higher score. So uh, it, it is it is very favorable to those who have a strong roster. Not necessarily, it's not necessarily a distinction between pay to play and free to play, though, because if you've been playing this game for a while, uh, you should have a beefy roster and this Blitz Gym should benefit you. If you haven't been playing this game as long and not spending money, then this this could be a detriment. So I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to work that out. I'm not sure. Uh, nothing, nothing's really popping in my head as how they could balance that. Maybe maybe making separate Blitz shards like uh, a lot of the community has been asking for for a while to make it even. So uh, kind of like arena shards, playing Blitz with people that have around your collection power. And as you hit a certain threshold, uh, you go to the next tier and you're competing with only with people around the same collection power as you. Uh, that would require a whole revamp and uh, they haven't indicated that a whole revamp to Blitz is coming, but maybe, maybe. Again, they're keeping a lot of things very close to the vest with this update, especially with these recent leaks that uh, I've been having, it's especially coming from the Envoy program that people have NDA. So uh, yeah, I, I, there's a lot that I don't know. There's a lot of suspicions that I have, but nothing has been confirmed, but uh, hopefully they make it good for all players of all collection power sizes. All right, and that is it for this edition of the Monday Mailbag, guys. I want to thank each and every one of you that left a question, whether it got answered or not. I do appreciate all of you that leave questions. And if you want your question potentially answered in an upcoming episode of the Monday Mailbag, make sure you join the Discord server. The link is in the description. There's a channel there dedicated to the Monday Mailbag. Just leave your questions on there, guys. And uh, before you go, I do want to talk about a couple promotions going on from Mikey B at Worldwide Nutrition. He just announced another one on stream this morning, and this one is about the newsletter. So if you have not joined the newsletter, you go to the Worldwide Nutrition site. Uh, you can use that affiliate link down below to go to their site and you join. You need your name, email, and the name doesn't need to be real. It could, use your, it could be your Twitch username, but the email needs to be real. You are going to be entered in the drawing to win a canister of the upcoming gamer drink Blitz. Yes. It helps your focus, has caffeine, nootropic, some really good stuff if uh, you don't have any issues with caffeine. It's a very good product, and the taste is very good, so you can get that and uh, potentially win that. The winners will be announced on stream, also announcing winners on stream for a drawing, and this is for existing customers. If you leave a Google review for Worldwide Nutrition, you are automatically entered to win that drawing for $25. The winner for that will be announced on stream on December 15th. So that is another good one. And uh, there's still that discount, the 25% off with that link in the description for Worldwide Nutrition, guys. And uh, if you spend over $100 and you have not already previously received a canister, a free canister of Blitz, which is $25 value, we'll automatically get that. If you spend over $100, guys, so a bunch of different things. Oh, and a bunch of free subs given out once Mikey B gets a 10 million total collection power, and he is almost there. He is in the 9.4, uh, 9.5. So he's climbing up there, guys. So yes, exciting stuff. And that is it, guys. Hopefully I see you on stream in the mornings. Come join the Valley Club, guys. We hang out every weekday morning on Twitch, twitch.tv backslash valleyflying76. Check me out on social media and give me a Hulk fist bump before you go. Hopefully you have a great day, guys. Valley flying out.